here 35 years ago, that part of the city wasn't as nice as, as it is today. Today, where they used to have parking lots, there's nice plazas to sit in and, and have a cup of coffee, coffee or drink something, eat something. Um, it's nicer today here than what it was back then. The reason for that being that after the Second World War, nearly 90% of the city was destroyed. Can you imagine? It's because of the str uh, strategic uh, <coughs> position that the city has. We're right here at the con confluence of two rivers. The railroads come through here. They did a lot of bombing um, and destruction after, basically after the war was over. They hadn't had that much up until those final days. So up ahead, when we get back, we won't have quite as long of a walk. We'll be going here closer to the corner, and I'll walk with you back to the ship. Klaus will leave us at that point in 2011. And it, they changed a lot of the traffic flows here, and a lot of the buildings that are here were um, spruced up, and the whole city just really put on its best hat. And we had a picture book summer that summer. We had no rainy days like this. It was just a magnificent summer. So right here is where we'll be getting out. And I'll tell you about the church that's on our right as we get back. So now up ahead you can actually see the Mosel River. The Mosel, some people know it better as the Moselle. It starts way up in France, about some 550 kilometer from here, and runs through Luxembourg before it comes into Germany. Once it's in Germany, it's named the Mosel River. And way back in the 60s and 70s, they put in a number of, of locks to make the travel along the rivers much better. They, they put the locks in so they could actually have ship traffic on it. In fact, the Viking River cruises do go up and down the Mosul, not as frequently as the uh, Rhine, of course. But they um, used those locks to get not only the people and the ships through the, the river, but they had... One of the first things I'd like to point out to you, though, is the bridge that we're approaching. You can see there's a statue in the middle of the bridge, and it's made out of basalt. And it's a, a statue of the man named Balduin. And the bridge is called the Balduin Bridge. He was the main architect of it, and he's the one who also secured the funding for this. And the stones actually come from the town of Vinigan, which is where we're headed. You see that they're black basalt stones. They were cut out of a, a, a lava flow that took place there in Vinigan some 14,000 years ago. And those stones normally would have come from upstream or downstream from the Rhine River, but Baldwin had uh, connections to Vinigan and was able to secure the stones for the base of the bridge from Vinigan. You can see this left side is the old bridge. It was from 1342. Was this? bridge established. And the second half is very modern. They had to do that in order for the ships to go up and down the, the, the Mosul River. Now last year we had basically a drought here and the river was so low that you could see more sandbars from what we're seeing right now. It was more sand than, than river. This year it's been quite the contrary uh, picture. Once we're under these two modern bridges, you can actually see that lock. The fish stairway is on the left-hand side. And an interesting thing about that stairway is the fact that there's another animal that uses our rivers here. It's the eel. And an eel has a very interesting life cycle. They come to the Mosul River, and they cannot jump up through those fish stairs. So they kind of congregate here, and the fishermen come along and collect the little baby eels, transport them up the stream to a, a place that they would normally make it to without the help, and there they spend the next seven to 18 years maturing. A fully matured eel will then kind of congregate again by these uh, locks until the lackmeister says, oops, they're getting there again. He'll slow the turbines down enough so that the eel can slip through there without being killed. That's why they say slipper is an eel. And when they've made it through, they actually 
will migrate across the entire Atlantic Ocean over to the Sagasso Sea, which is near the Bermudas, and that's where they spawn and die. And then the little baby eels, either as little tiny itsy bitsy eels, or they wait a while, but they end up coming across the entire Atlantic again and starting that whole cycle again. They come back over here to mature and to spawn. Or come over here to mature and go back there to spawn. It's just an incredible thing. It's a little bit like the monarch butterflies. Nobody can are those the same eels they have in Holland? I, yes, they are. Mm -hmm. And they, they have, and they all have just certain places that they go. They'll go to Holland. There's places that they go throughout all of Europe, but they all come back over here to do their maturing. Do you like eel? I love eel. I do too. A lot of people say, oh, I wouldn't even think about eating it. I think it's wonderful. The special ones in Holland, they're hard to get now. Yeah. Well, they, I read that they do here between 10,000 and 15,000 eel go up and down the river each year, which is a pretty high amount of uh, eel. My mother-in-law loves eel, and she knows of a special place to go and, and buy it, special events. Like at Christmas time, we'll have an eel as uh, an appetizer. I guess in Holland, you have to know somebody now just to get oh, Really? You have to have the vitamin B. They say vitamin B here for bitsium, meaning you have to know somebody. Now the area that we're approaching here is a much more modern area. It's been built up in the last years as an administration center. And right here to the left of us is the uh, military administration in this area. And they put on a pretty ugly building up uh, two mosaics that depict the Mosul and Rhine rivers. In this area, there's also the unemployment office, the uh, financial office, surveyor, there's two hospitals. There's quite a number of official people working here, and so a lot of people work in this general area. There's an Aldi. What's that? Aldi, because we have Aldi yeah, in the uh, States. Yeah, they're finally getting there? over there. We shop them for Aldi. Yeah, uh, you know what? I never used to think that Aldi was that great, and, and they're getting better all the time. <laughs> oh, they're wonderful. <laughs> they really are. There's a lot of things that at first I thought, nah, you can't do that, you can't buy that there. And then I would try it, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is it's so much mm -hmm. less expensive that yes. in the end I say to myself, well, I think there's something I have to do with that money instead. Yes. <laughs> I was a long time fan of a certain washing uh, detergent. Right. That converted. So I now you do. Yeah, it's amazing. Here we have now uh, another side effect of those locks is that the river here gets real still. It becomes almost a lake atmosphere. And people will use it almost as a lake with their boats and their sailboats rowing, paddling, uh, swimming, all kinds of nice water activities. Generally, when the weather's a little warmer, you see all kinds of people out there, but most of the time on the weekends, it's really, really busy on the Mosul River. Glad for. Now, if you look across, you can see the first or the last, as they may call it, of the vineyards along the Mosul that is terraced. You can see it's terraced with roads going through it horizontally, of course, and the vineyards are set up in a horizontal way. When you came down the Rhine, you see quite often, especially there by Beaupark, you see quite often vertical vineyards where the people go up and down the slopes. Here on the Mosul, we tend to go across the slopes quite often. There's a couple of reasons for that. Having worked in the vineyards, I much prefer going across the hill to do my work, going from one plant to the next, going across the hill rather than going up and down. I don't like going up and down. Um, when they go up and down, they can use 